Hello, it's Ryan here with Hobbies and Once again, today we're going to be doing another uh, comic book by the issue. Today we're going to be looking at Seal number 9 out of 12. Uh, this is written by uh, Tom Taylor, with art by Yasmin Petrie, and colors by Arif Prianto, and lettering by Wes Abbott. So there you go, that's here. Um, this is titled War, I guess. And it starts off at Amazonia. So uh, Cassandra Kane uh, is a Robin, and she goes and frees Kal-El from the prison he's in in Amazonia. Um, she removes the lasso from him and gives it to him, and she's like, here, man, there's a bunch of stuff happening elsewhere. You've got to take this with you. And he flies off to the battle. So we switch over to the El Kingdom, where Kibolta has just been killed uh, by Lara El, by uh, Kal-El's mother. And, uh, well, uh, Diana is, is, is having issues with this situation, of course. And then um, the uh, Black... What, what's the... What's the superhero's name? Black Lightning? I know, this is a soundtrack. I don't know. Uh, well, the, the Lightning Kingdom princess um, happens to uh, decide to attack Lara. And of course, uh, you know, they are in uh, cahoots with the Amazonians. So they decide to battle together. And they're fighting Lara, but she actually ends up leaving the battlefield. And she actually ends up meeting Kal-El in the sky. And uh, when he tries to talk to his mom, she smacks him into the ground. And uh, now everyone is attacking Cal uh, instead of uh, Lara. And uh, Amanda Waller sees this, so she leads the charge to try to save him. Um, and uh, while this is happening, uh, the Joker is wearing his Green Lantern ring. And he's, you know, in the sky looking around, seeing what's going on. And uh, well, the ring tells him to just attack whoever he wants, and so he just attacks indiscriminately, which is a problem, of course. And uh, then Bruce shows up on a dragon, uh, which in this case is actually um, uh, Beast Boy. And they quickly end up in a slight stalemate. Bruce is uh, up against Cal, and everyone around them is kind of you know unsure what's going on because these guys are not supposed to be fighting each other, right? Then we move over to Constantine and Lois Lane, who are kind of trying to figure out what the hell the problem is because apparently it seems like they have been um, manipulated and things are going on that should not be going on. <clears throat> And nothing that's happening makes any sense, uh, which is totally fair. Then we move on to the dungeon where uh, Laura shows up and she starts killing prisoners. Specifically, she starts killing, um, uh, what's it called? Killer? No, King Shark, I think is the name of the character. Um, and then we get uh, over to Oliver and Dinah, who uh, manage to escape and they kind of end up escaping into the battlefield. Uh, I'm not sure how that works because I don't see why the dungeon would directly lead to the battlefield because usually you know, you don't want the battlefield to be right outside your your, uh, your castle, right? There should be a lot of distance between like the castle walls where they're attacking and like the castle itself. But I'm not sure. The logistics here don't really make sense to me, but you know, it's fine. It doesn't really matter too much. And uh, they end up in the battle. It turns out there's two different people that look like Laura, and uh, one of them is on the ground, and the other one is asking who the hell they are. And, uh, well, it's a big problem. Uh, Oliver manages to use a crossbow, because at this point he lost an arm, and he uses this crossbow. He manages to make the, the arrow light on fire. He shoots it, it hits the woman on the ground, and uh, she ends up being a white Martian. And, uh, well, it leaves. Uh, you know, it turns invisible as Kalos is trying to chase it down. And uh, on the ground, Alfred is like, uh, yeah, I gotta tell you guys something, and he turns into a green Martian. And, well, that was the end of this uh, part of the story. It was really, really good. I really did enjoy it. I think it was very well uh, developed and really enjoyable, but uh, honestly, I think the, um, the release schedule for this has been a little bit slow, and so it doesn't really lend uh, kind of itself to developing a lot of enjoyment for it because you only get little snippets, you don't get this continuous story, it makes the, the feeling of the story not as cool as it could be, but that's just kind of the nature of how it is, right? So I do definitely think I'm going to have to go back and read this all as a single entity, you know, all 12 uh, issues back to back and see how that changes my experience because um, I really like it. There's a big lull in the middle of the story and then it did finally start to start to pick up again, but um, it hasn't really managed to um, to fully captivate, captivate me the same way that it did early on. So it is what it is, but it was a pretty good issue. So that's uh, that's the review for Dark Knights of Steel number 9. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe, comment down below, and let me thought. And thank you guys so much for watching. See you guys later.